what's the old saying? Uh, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, uh, whatever that means. <laughs> but uh, we know if you just invest a little bit of money into doing the proper things in terms of ergonomics, like using the right workplace setup, using the right um, understanding the risk factors and doing something about them, you could avoid you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 times that cost in terms of trying to treat people. Because the one thing we know is it's really, really hard to treat people for back injuries once they occur, especially if they involve the more serious injuries to the disc. Now you're talking to them, often a permanent injury because it's so hard to treat and a lot of times the, the surgeons don't know how to treat it. And a lot of times if the surgery doesn't work, um, that means you got a disability for life. The biggest factor in determining how to, how to prevent injuries in the workplace is really all about recognizing where the risk is. You know, so, you know, it's, once you do research in this area, it comes pretty naturally. You know that the lifting causes the problem. You know that, you know, the pushing and pulling causes the problem. But if you're, you know, out on the floor of a factory, uh, you may not recognize the way these injuries occur. They're very slow and cumulative, and it's not really that last effort that you put forth that caused the injuries. So for example, that one time that you pushed the cart that weighed you know, a thousand pounds, it may have been the previous thousand times you did that that led up to that final event. Um, you know, the prevailing attitude in a lot of industry is, well, I'll just, you know, I I'm a, a big manly man, so I'll just work my way through it and I'm strong enough or it won't hurt me. But that's because you can't feel it. If you look at the construction of the disc, um, you have very few nerve endings in the disc that uh, let you perceive the pain. And so when you're doing damage, you don't know it. And then once you do enough damage where the disc starts to bulge or starts to rupture and you push against other tissues that are surrounding that, then you feel it. And that's why it, sound, it feels to you like it happened all of a sudden when it's really that was the straw that broke the camel's back. And if you understand when you're doing damage, uh, when you're doing that work, then you can do something about it. So this particular study is uh, a piece of the puzzle. So if you look at controlling risk, it's I often uh, liken it to a, a, a jigsaw puzzle where you have all these different pieces on the table that you're trying to put together and, and figure out how they fit together in order to control the risk. What we are trying to do with every study we do is figure out how all those factors fit together and what role the particular risk factor we're looking at plays relative to the, all those other dimensions. And so this is, is starting to fill a space that we've really had very little information about, which is how do you translate those guidelines that were laboratory driven into the field where it's people actually making measurements on the carts that you know haven't been made uh, or if they have been made before, we don't know how well they aligned with our recommendations. So now we have that linkage that is very important for the application and the prevention of these musculoskeletal disorders. Some of the standards that are out there in industry for trying to understand how to measure pushing and pulling in the workplace are totally inadequate. Um, they assume that you're going to do very long, sustained pushes and pulls, and we found that in reality, this is so tremendously different from what happens in the spine when people are doing this thing at natural rates that they don't, really don't even apply. And that's probably our biggest finding is that we really need to reconsider some of these national standards that everybody's using. So the value of this study um, for industry is really, it can be summed up in one word, which is translation. So here in the laboratory, we do a lot of studies every year and you know we publish these and try and distribute that information to our colleagues in the academic world and to those who are trying to prevent musculoskeletal disorders, but reaching your fellow researchers is one thing. Reaching industry to where people actually could use it is totally different, and that's what I call translation. So we're taking the science, which we realize that the people who are actually gonna use this information may not, may not understand what we did or why we did it, and they really don't have to. But if we could present it in a way that shows them, here's how you apply it, that's when you get the win. Because they're the boots on the ground, those are the people who are really out there 
um, saving people from back injuries every day. It's not us, you know, we just do the research. It's really the people who go to industry and apply this that are really doing the good for the company that's saving the money and reducing the injury risk. And so that's the real value of this study is it was aimed at how do you translate this information.